Hello? Hello, we're just being quiet. Okay. Um, good. Um, any comments about uh, starting on this ticket? My comments on ticket. Yeah. <laughs> Suggestion change. He is. He is yeah, here. Um. Is that a yes or a no? All right. Let's go here. I don't know if this is technically correct. No, Dave, I have a very hard time hearing you. I think I heard some syllables, maybe, but that was it. So if it's not only me, then it's you, maybe. People cannot hear me right now. I'm going to drop and rejoin. Oh, no, no, it's better, but not very good. You're just really quiet, Dave. That's all. It's like your uh, mic's not close enough or, or your audio is turned down. And now he's gone. He's reconnecting. I think that'll help. Yeah, WebEx has this very uh, subtle noise cancellation feature that sometimes gobbles up a complete audio stream if it's just below the threshold. Yeah, when playing D&D with my son's friends, it eats the first syllable of pretty much every st every comment. Which is almost always there what they rolled. So I say roll for blah blah blah, and I go I hear mumble four. I'm like was that a twenty four or a fourteen? What did you get? <laughs> then they repeat it, and of course it still eats the first syllable. Hey, trying again now. Is this mic any better? Wow, yes, much better. I, like I, I didn't actually change anything other than to exit and rejoin. Oh, weird. Thanks. So, Mike, are we at the first comment, or did you already scroll down a bit? Hey, I added another suggestion since you didn't restore the blank line. I added the... Uh... Uh, suggestion to restore the blank line as opposed to cramming the two paragraphs together. Make sure it's committed. Yeah, it did. But it's not showing up on your screen for some reason. I guess if you manual refresh, it will show up, I guess. There it is. It sounds like you would undo this change. Correct. But, uh, so my comment is basically, yes, I agree with uh, Dave's uh, change. And also, I like his comment very much. So. Um, have you ever spelled that out in this detail? Because this basically captures, captures it all. Like your comment basically could have been ID text, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so I know, I guess, and, and I'm setting yes, yeah. more words, I know, but still I think it's vital to capture because I really like what you wrote in your comment actually.
would that be something good to do? Um, I have no strong opinion either way. I mean, I, I, I agree with you that it would be useful to capture someplace. Um, the other place that it could be added would be into the EAT document. Um, I don't have a preference between the two documents. Um, I don't think it belongs in this part of this document, but uh, yeah, okay. As, as, as far as whether we just add it into EAT or add it in as an architectural thing, I can go either way. So, but I, I agree with you that it would be good to capture that point somewhere. I did not check to see if it was already in the EAT document. So, no, it's it's not EAT specific. Okay, GPU examples are EAT specific, yeah. of course. But I think the the idea. Is, is about uh, what what does the verifier really vouch for, and it's not yeah. it's specific. Yeah, you know, me and Lawrence discussed this about whether we should have verifier procedures, and I think I one time had it in the document, and we took it out because we were hoping that a description of what a verifier should do uh, would be in the architecture document. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, this. Yeah, I you know I look at this. Yeah, I agree with what I said earlier. There's no there's nothing each specific here, and you know we could, we could put procedures like that in there, but I think uh, then the danger runs that uh, the verification procedures outlined at eat are not consistent with what's uh, what's discussed in architecture. Okay. I'm just looking for a particular place in the document that it might make sense in this document if it might make sense. No places immediately appearing to me, but let me check. I'm looking for any more elaboration on what a verifier might do or what uh, an appraisal policy might tell a verifier to do. Uh, the closest place that I can find so far is the first paragraph of 4.1, which is uh, uh, an appraisal policy is talking about what the verifier does. So, if we edit it in some place, that's the place that I can see right now uh, is to somehow add it into 4.1. Yeah, if that's that's a good question. Um, so, and the appraisal it, policies here are for Evidence. Yeah, I assume it, it's a little bit confusing, but uh, maybe maybe it's not appraisal policies only then anymore. The separate chapter because it's about the verifier. Um, yeah, what you're looking for is how does you how do you configure the verifier as to what to put into the attestation results? Right, is that part of mm -hmm. right now? I'm suggesting it could be part of what we call appraisal policies, even if it's. And it may be odd to think of it as part of the appraisal process, but you could you could cast it as part of the appraisal process. Yeah, maybe maybe we call for one appraisal process. Talk about policies and what the verifier does. Is that fine? Um, I'd be fine with that. Okay. I mean, if if you want, we can create this as a separate issue, track it in a separate pull request, and assign it to me to do what you just what you just suggested. So. Sounds wonderful. You said such, you just said, yeah, you just said me, which means well, you. It's because you said <laughs> my text. And so if I take some variation of that same text, my comment and put it under there, I'm hoping you might like that too. So yes, I, I would do like that. <laughs> so you're proposing to put it in 4.1? Since I don't see a better place. Yeah. So Hank is saying if we renamed it from appraisal policies to appraisal process, but kept the same text and then augmented it with uh, something like the text that I put into the comment. I think that's what you're suggesting, Hank, right? Yeah, it sounds good to me. Okay. Okay. And yeah, the the the, the, the two sentences, the first the, the first two sentences that you're highlighting, not the third one, is text that we'd be talking about. Um, well, now you get three sentences highlighted again, but sure. Uh, yeah, I'll figure it out. But you need to revert the text if we agree. I um put a revert suggestion here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm again suggesting revert.
feel there should be a button for this to re just revert. <laughs> I know. Yeah, really, there isn't. This is strange. Do not decline suggestion, right? Um, okay. I think in some sense, this is loosely related to my other comment that we were talking about, but it's not quite the same thing. But again, this is a case where I prefer the original. All right, I don't think this is a straight revert. revert. Well, I'd be happy with a straight revert, but I don't know what the intent of the typically a service means. Need Ned to oh, articulate this. It sounds yeah. like me, uh, sorry for that. Uh, yeah, um, you have this uh, administrator above. So I was like, confused by that specification and so i thought uh, but when the verify felt so empty now i don't know why and what does this so uh i assumed that the verifier would be a service running somewhere but maybe that's wrong i think that it's just uh trying to be symmetric in the uh um, expressiveness of this definition i mean it <clears throat> I don't know that you have anything similar in the relying party section, right? I, mean, I, I don't think there's any symmetry because I, I don't care about symmetry with the with the uh, administrator, but is there a symmetry with relying party? So the rel we had a large conversation about the relying party and how it's a part of a bigger entity or and then whether the relying party was the bigger entity or just the thing that does the actual evaluation. Okay. Appraisal. Yep, we had that great. conversation about about relying party, um, and it made sense to me. Um, but I all I I I don't I don't understand typically a service in this case here. Okay, if either. you don't understand it either, then I guess I would recommend reverting. Yeah, seems to be fine. Also, weird comma. Sorry, German. <laughs> Yeah, I agree. The comment is also weird, but reverting would fix that too. Yeah, it's basically the German way to place comma. Sometimes I, <laughs> I still do that. Uh, just... <laughs> yeah, so I, I, I had merged this version with both versions because we were going to somehow pick one or the other. Um, that's the why. Two, yeah, between the two, you can see my vote is for the Hank version. Only because I it is shorter, number one, so there's less text to complain about. Um, and number two, I found it to be easier to follow than the other version. Ned is not here today, so he cannot defend his text. Exactly, yeah. Uh, okay. Well, I think that Hank's version was the result of uh, more of of a well, later yeah. version, right? You edited something, and they they both half edited at the same time. But I think that you started your editing later on with a newer understanding. Yeah, since it looked to me like the Hink version is what's already in Master, correct? I couldn't so say one way or the other. This is the one that's proposing what uh, issue fifty five in the master, and so anything that's not a diff. Well, this would be removing. Different. This would be removing. Yeah, I don't know. And then the Hank version it, happens. But, yeah, but you can see like six thirty one to six fifty two. None of that is new text, right? Oh yeah, you're right. Okay, so all right. So if you prefer the, the Hank, Hank version, version, the Hank version is really the already agreed on version. I think that is actually correct. Um, but I, I, I shouldn't have an opinion here because um, I'm pitching my text. <laughs> right. I will yeah. remove the Ned version then, okay? 
Uh, I won't do it. I won't do it in this commit because it's too. Okay. I think that's too complicated. I'll do that immediately okay. afterwards. So then, the, what was the point of the removal that was up above? I don't know yeah. what the text was that was removed. I didn't comment on that, but what was it? That's. Um, let me read through this again to see. It might be fine because I didn't comment on it. So maybe I did read through it and say, yeah, that's okay to remove. I don't know if it's because Ned was moving it down or something like that. So. I think Ned was moving it down uh, or, or yeah. Okay. So this is in the section on composite device and the text is about, cause I'm looking at the uh, line 466, right? The conceptual data flow for a composite device. Um, and then 478 deleted is talking about in this composite device scenario. So it does match. Okay. So then I guess I, if we don't take the Ned version, then I think that this text needs to stay. What do you think? I am fine with this text because if I read it, it feels like I wrote yeah. most of it. <laughs> Again. No, I'm saying uh, if Ned is moving it down and we don't accept the text that moves it down, then it still stays as long as there. That's what I'm saying. It's fine. It's fine. I see. The problem is that uh, we would have, we have two different ways to place this one now. And uh, yeah. master should stay. Um, I think you might have marked something res as resolved that Hank, you had a comment on. Um, there was some comment that you said, I think we should add the word remote. Oh, yeah, that was, that's true. I think it's one of the earlier ones, earlier in the document, something where I said, let's revert. You said, yeah, you like the other one better too, because you agreed. And then, but you'd said, oh, but we should add the word remote. I don't remember where that was. It was before, it was before that. Comment. So it was one of the ones that started to resolve. Let me see if I can find it. I noticed your comment. Yeah. Um, it was line 102 you'd commented on. outdated probably because that's yeah, yeah it's, it's line it, look for the comment on line 102 yeah yep, that, that one scroll down a little bit uh nope go to the previous show result i mean i, I have them all yep that's it that's the hank comment that i was referring to yeah, just a single word, uh, but um, says, the purpose is to define useful terminology for attestation and Hank is saying useful terminology for remote attestation. Yeah, we, we did not open that can of worms for uh, local attestation. So uh, we have only the, let's call it local combined composition, composite device mm -hmm. things. And that's the, as local as we get. Um, so I assume mm -hmm. it's just a net. That's why I said it, but I think it's about remote station. I, I, I don't care either way. I just wanted to make sure that people saw your comment since. Thanks. I would have missed that we just exactly. resolved this. In a I'm okay with the text as it is. I'm okay. I'm also okay if we think we need to add the word remote. I, but I thought I'd let you argue for that. So that's, I didn't put it in. So any opinions here in the room? Uh, that's insignificant. So not not significant enough to. Uh, I mean, the the title of the document already has remote in it, and so it may be clear enough in context. But that's why I don't carry either way. So. Ah, okay. Yeah. Good enough. Okay, then just disregard my comment. I'm fine. Disregard your comment. I was muted. So you don't want to make yes. that change after all? 
yeah, if there's no strong feelings here, and yeah. I think uh, it's just a knit. And we don't have to reiterate remote all the time, you know. It's remote attestation evidence, you know. You could also say that. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, Dave has uh, ring something to do with the, uh, so, okay. Let's go on then. Okay. Uh, okay, so uh, an update to freshness. No, no, I'm saying that, you, uh, so you you still have the action item to do something on that one, Michael? Or I, that? Yes, I'm I'm doing that, yeah. So uh, I'm going to, I'm pull, I'm picking the Hank version, restoring the text, the two paragraphs we removed, okay, and I'm you. not, and I'm not putting the word remote in. Okay. Well, I could do that. It's already typed. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. Just making sure we know what the next step is. Thanks. Not putting the word remote in. Okay. Okay. All right. That is committed to main to master. What? The the change the 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 one we just did is is merged. Okay. I will have to re-review it then to see to verify that it did what we just talked about. Oh. Okay. So I I I, I did it in my editor to put that text back in. I couldn't figure out how to undo that. Uh, did you want me I to push it? To yeah, I was expecting to look look at it on the screen again to say, yeah, it looks good. Go ahead and merge it. But uh, I can probably do that. So issue fifty. Have it up on uh, my screen and then the Atlas view, just scanning through it right now to make sure. Uh, the When I'm looking at 89, it still shows those paragraphs being deleted. On. Yeah, it still shows me, because uh, I just did a refresh on 89. It still shows the. Hang on, hang on. Version. All right, so. I don't know if you did it in a different branch or what? Well, I'm trying to put it put it back in this branch. Okay. I don't think I'm succeeding because this text is still missing. Right. All right. Uh, let me go to here. Commits. Okay. So. I've put this paragraph back in. Uh, so is this a commit into which branch? Into master. Sorry, I pushed this into master. I merged issue fifty-five, and then I fixed in master the the missing paragraph. Uh, okay, okay, so it's hard to find it. Okay, I, I understand why right. it's hard to find the diffs. Yeah, yeah. I, I I should have pushed that. I should have made another diff on that branch. That would have been smarter. I agree. So I put this paragraph back in. Okay. Removed the word Hank version and removed the Ned version. That's what I've done. GitHub doesn't have a way of seeing diffs across two commits, does it? It does, but you have to uh, kind of create those URLs manually. Oh, you do? Okay. I have not found, have not found a way to create them uh, with a G or GUI. Right. Essentially, we want to have a diff from whatever the merge point of this one was to the head. And that's what I was trying to make with that. I probably could. Uh, or even the diffs between the, like you see the uh, the top line and the third line, right? The C47, C53 versus CFF41EE. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Maybe Hank knows how to do that, but I don't. <laughs> You construct URLs manually. I have no idea. Yeah, they have. They have to exchange the uh, um, unique identifiers for commits in the URL. So you just put look at the diff between two pasts, and then put another past in there, and then it ha happens. Um, so um, that's how I do. It. I, I, like I said I don't know how to do that. <laughs> I don't uh, see the URL. Two parents uh, commit. I, I'm. Let's continue. Can we just continue? Yeah, sure. Uh, 
Okay. So this was your first update to freshness. There was a yet another update to consider that you did to deal with some of the uh, one is to freshness and one is to time consideration. Uh that yeah, okay. I thought this was a this was a a I thought this was a, a response to some of the comments in 487. No, there's a two different time things. consideration is right. the easier thing to do. Uh maybe we start with that one. Okay. They're actually both contentious. Yeah, of course they're post but this is less volume. The other one is like <laughs> Thomas and yeah. me having a monstrosity of a threat. So um The reason these are left now we're down to only the contentious ones left as well as uh, issues that have no pull request yet exactly yeah this is fine so we can finally do this here um so is thomas on the call yep uh so um there was a uh do we drop this or don't we drop this thing and then if we accept it do we go with the text and give thomas a chance to make a uh, yet another proposal. I think that's where we are at. Thomas, would you agree? Or Dave, anybody else? Yes, I think the two options are the ones that you have uh, highlighted. Either drop or let's rewrite on your, uh, based on your last proposal. Yeah, so my, my and the Dave also said, what is the, what, 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 what is this here? This is, this is, this, I don't need, I don't need uniqueness, uh, that basically. So, uh, right. in a nutshell. So, right. um, so I'm far, I'd be on the favor of drop, right? So far, I'm on the, I'm on the side of drop, right? I've opened yeah, a discussion, yeah, but uh, that's where I'm leaning right now. Same, same as with, uh, with the, um, with the, uh, thing with about vouching for the verifier stuff. Um, it is not each specific and it is not Tudor specific and it's not uh, Yang Chara specific. It is a, a relatively, Universal way there, there are very finite ways to uh, uh, talk about freshness, and I think uh, to go, go into some detail if it's if there are only a few options is in the scope of the architecture. Because if you pull it into eat, then then it's, it's suddenly eat specific. But but using a nonce in cryptography seriously is a architectural feature today. Uh, it is it's a very very and the, the uniqueness thing is just to facilitate the freshness. So. Uh, uh, the, for, nonce for is already in the, the nonce is already discussed in the master branch. No, no arguments there because nonce is already in. No, it's not. It's only in the appendices. The nonce at the moment. It's not spoken about it in the in the text at all. So in freshness, I would like to make the transition from suddenly using a nonce in a diagram, which is not introduced at all, and uh, having this unique value thing in the body of the text at least a little bit, to talk about that because it will be used in the examples extensively without being introduced. At least once, and that is the way I, I was trying to align this a little bit. And I think it's very vital to understand what it vouches for and why and how recentness is very important. How you create the evidence and how does the evidence looks like? I mean, you, of course, it's a payload thing. Therefore, it's an eat, and a nonce claim is an eat. That it's absolutely okay. But uh, there are effectively uh, uh, uses to this. That are, why is this so interesting? And that is this unique value that's non repeatable thing that Thomas actually wrote. And I know everybody is a little bit annoyed, um, especially by the long discussion. I know, sorry, sorry. But uh, the content, I think, provides you with this guidance that you need to create protocols. And I think that is, that is the essential thing. It's not spe protocol specific, it is relatively universal and it's vital. And, and if we can have at least, I don't know, half a page, and please don't throw stones at me, that would be. I think very useful. I think I'm important. disagreeing with anything you said. I'm not sure how it relates to this pull request. It's oh, not much right. Michael, it's the other one. It's on the other one. It's the other one. Yeah, you switch it again. Oh, I thought you were okay. the All right. Oh. So I thought you told me we should start with the other one because it was easier. Oh, yeah, but then we start. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Uh, the sequence and me. Uh, how, how useful. Okay. Um, all right. So at the bottom here, at the bottom are the most vital comments. I, I hope it's okay to skip all this red polling here and then go to the uh, uh, bottom where basically Dave's comment is that says why and, and Thomas's virtual basis also says why and if maybe this way. Yeah, so far I don't see a, a reason to put in any of the new text so that's why I'm asking. Yeah again uh, I'm, I'm re-highlighting uh, uh, uniqueness is one of the two things how to uh, uh, do the security conservation which are motivated here uh, because of no replay attacks, evidence has to be uh, attributable, I think. 
and it is very important to have it as soon as possible in some scenarios. That's why all this recent stuff is in there now. And one of the very common things is to have this non-replayable thing. And, and Thomas's comment, you haven't read that yet, Dave, I think, maybe, maybe you have, uh, actually provides some answers to your question. Why is this relevant? Because Thomas now, I wanted to, didn't want to introduce too many. Please go all the way down, Michael, by, because you are like fence and forth, and that's very, very confusing to me. Uh, okay, I don't see Thomas's comment down here. I think his comment is here, uh, up here somewhere. Oh, is it? It has coach coaching section in it. And I don't see that at all. Well, Thomas had a comment down at the bottom. Uh, I don't remember also, what it was, but he did have one that you showed on the screen, Michael. I, I didn't cancel it, so I think it's still. I there. thought it's this stuff here. No, this is what not. you're speaking it's, of. It's from today. That's, that is today. two weeks ago. Yeah. Maybe I'll go to conversation. Oh, yeah, maybe that's. You know, the main part. It's a bit. Yeah, this smokes all. Yeah, this is this is eight minutes ago. Okay. Yeah. So that's basically the reason why I think this is so Thomas got it like like entirely. So I think we are now very actually we, we converged somehow. Um, so that that I totally agree with this, and I think that is essential because all this timing stuff in the uh, timing consolidation section shows us there is a relevance to all of this when this happens, and. And we have an intent why this is all these timestamps are, uh, are important, and especially with the uh, conveyance of evidence, and of course also with the conveyance of other conceptual messages, we have this recentness, and this is and is it still valid? So we have two things here: is it is it is it very recent? So that's very important to some of the scenarios, and is this still valid? These are two uh, timing intents. That we then then elaborate on by going through all the timestamps later on again, and that's uh, also why I added this because there is no transition from from the idea of remote attestation and the interactions we have here, and then suddenly timestamps in the scenarios, which is correct, but there is this intent in between that I I think there is I, it's almost hard to understand why, and this is the why because it is important to have some evidence very recent. And to understand some evidence expired, it's not valid anymore. And these are two uh, things that Thomas elaborated on here with clocks and uh, the notion of expiry and such. And I think that is a fundamental principle that is not specific to a single solution. And that is the answer to Dave, not specific to a single oh, solution as well to verify. My understanding is everything you just said is already in the master branch in section 10 right now. What's the problem we're trying to address that's not already addressed? Because it does talk about uh, freshness it talks about uh, expiration it talks about whether you have a uh, and it uses the word nonce uh, or to use synchronized clocks all that discussion is in there right now what's the gap okay. section 10 correct I what's the gap in section my... 10 yeah i think i oh there's nonce you're right yeah there you go yeah, so what I'm saying, what is the gap in Section 10 right now? Because I don't understand what problem we're trying to solve that's broken in Section 10 right now. Okay, um, when I was I was talking to a lot of stakeholders who could call them, I don't know, people who do remote attestation effectively. And, uh, and, and I realized that freshness means different things too. A, conceptual, different types of conceptual messages. The freshness to attestation results is different to the freshness of evidence in such a way that if you apply the same principles of uh, freshness to of attestation results to evidence, it's broken. It doesn't work anymore. It's just useless. And uh, that is that was a high. It was, was an interesting. That, 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 that's an inter that's an interesting assertion. Um, is there a uh, write up that says why it would be broken? And I'm not saying it goes in the document. I'm saying that would be news to me. Is there an issue or something that explains what's broken? Um, the, uh, the, I think the, the, the just Thomas, actually, I didn't want to go into the details. I want to highlight the freshness, recentness, and uniqueness that's conflated a lot. Um, the, the, the write up is not there because I did not write it up, but as I already said in the, by, by accident, basically, Thomas wrote up like 80% of it. Because these are the cornerstones. It does, it's just the facts. The problem around it is that you can use expiry for some things, but it is not easy 
useful if you use nonces, for example. And it doesn't help you at all. And also time synchronization doesn't help you anymore. You just have to really make sure that your nonce is really non-repeatable value and such. So uh, all this is recentness, but there are different nuances to this. And, we, and I think it is important for people to decide if they want to create a solution draft, what lane to pick. I, I think agree. Sorry? Sorry, I was gonna just add to that. One of the things I like about the, the text that Thomas just wrote, um, is that it gets away from the idea of nonce as it relates to challenge response. There's so much baggage that the word nonce has in people's minds that the idea of showing that there are other methods for freshness, I think is a useful thing to add that I don't think is, is not denied by section 10, but we're not articulating other methods that are interesting. Uh, I know that I care a lot about not having a challenge response for a lot of the work in the in the network, because I want to make sure that we can do broadcast, multicast, all kind of ways of of doing uh, validity uh, and of freshness without having a nonce every time it's out there. So I do like the text that Thomas put together because it starts to highlight um, alternatives to challenge response, which are often bound to the idea of a nonce. Which text are you referring to? The text that uh, is in Thomas's comments uh, just below this. The, the one that was at the time we started the call. Right here, oh, yes. Uh, I think that this gets beyond what's in section 10 for why architectures care about some of this. And we really haven't talked much about the need for broadcast or multicast proof of freshness in the base document in section 10. This starts to highlight that that beyond a nonce and beyond challenge response, there are methods of, of doing um, remote attestation without the challenge response. So that's what I like about what section 10 already talks. I mean, I, I'm not trying to necessarily say that section 10 is perfect. I'm trying to say, what's the problem we're trying to solve, right? So section 10 already talks about, you can do it without a nonce, right? That was the whole time synchronization paragraph that's in there right now. So that part's in there. So I'm trying to figure out what's the problem we're trying to solve. The problem I see here that's not in 10 is some of the elements of how where section 10 is that we're not explicitly saying this can't be done. So I think that 10 is, at least the way I read it, was saying that it, the elements that are there versus any of the, the any of the, of the hows. Any it does the point to draft Burkholz, but it doesn't talk about um, I guess uh, I, sort, I sort of read it and I don't, it, the idea that this is not challenge response, only challenge response doesn't pop out at me for sure. Um, it, it, felt it talks about those two approaches. One is a nonce generated by a remote entity, that's challenge response. And this and specifically a second approach is to rely on synchronized clocks, right? So second approach means not the first approach. So I'm trying to figure out, yeah. is, uh, the, is there a gap in the second approach? Yeah, by the, by the way, yeah, by the way, that's, that's not, uh, it, it, yeah, sorry. I mean, going off of what Eric said, I mean, we've run into uh, we've run into a recent problem with our uh, BOE products where we want to send a you know some sort of security assurance over the BOE ad channel, which is one way. It's like about it, 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 it's like IT multicast. But the problem is is that those devices just don't have an absolute time reference in uh, each. What we did was we actually defined a value called uptime. Which isn't great. It's not, uh, you know, but it just says, okay, how long has the device been up since its last uh, spec boot cycle? Um, is that going to be? It, would we allow for such things when we talk about freshness in these one-way connections? Uh, you know, like what Eric was talking, what, what Eric alluded to. You know, the non-challenge response, or, or would it always have? Would we say absolute time references, and that's it for freshness? This can always be relevant, uh, relevant, relative timestamps. Also, I think also that. Uh, uh, Thomas comment uh, elaborates on that. But yes, it can be absolute and uh, relative, and that is a very yeah. It is not excellent. I agree, but if you have nothing else, yeah, you have to use that. Um, yeah, relative okay. time by itself, unless you have synchronized clocks, you can't. I don't see how you can possibly use it for any security purpose. A relative time. Oh, absolute time clock. You mean you have a clock? A absolute time. I mean synchronized clocks, right? If you don't have synchronized oh, clocks, then I don't think that you can use it for anything. It's easy because you can take uh, to create nonces from uh, non-repeatable values that are uh, clocked, fixed, uh, therefore relative, and then you can assess recentness with a single clock. 
and uh, and even the time span between. Uh, you can only uh, do it. Specific. I'm saying you can do it with a challenge response with a nonsense generated by somebody other than the one with the relative clock. Or sorry, you, sorry. You, uh, I can't tell whether you're talking the one that about has the clock. The one that has the clock rates, right? right? I can't tell what you're talking about without going to an example in section 16. But like I said, right now I don't understand what the gap is in section 10. I have not read all of Thomas's comments, so. Yeah. Just and done at the time start the call. It's the elaboration on what is expiration, what is clock, how are our clock values relevant here, and how does this all relate to freshness? So nonce, yes, is one part of it. But I wanted basically it's a refactoring of the of the section ten. If you see the okay. original so, it's it uh, directly uh, in section ten, and it says all oh, this, oh, this lava lava test is just now has headlines. It has the two headlines now. It's it's subdivision of the main concepts. Yes. Um, if people like Thomas's text or Thomas's direction, which I can't have a comment on yet because I haven't read it all yet, it was just done at the, be at the beginning of the call. Um, I'm wondering if we should generate a new new pull request for uh, Thomas's suggestion. I would love that. I think this is important to to articulate. Because then I can review it uh, when I get time. I mean, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, now, next week, whatever. In the, at the moment, it's just a, a comment in the conversation that is true. But yeah. I uh, I found that was a very good reply to my single sentence. Yes, it was a short. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so the, I, I, I latched on that. So I would be very happy to see that as a pull request. All right. So, um, Hank, I um, did a rebase of this 87 on master. Again, there was some uh, conflicts that I think were trivial that I resolved, mostly involving the Tuda reference, um, yeah. and so that's on the branch freshness too. Uh, but I could push it as freshness if you prefer. Uh, I'm not sure what that does to all the conversation, so that's why I, rec I decline. And then you got you're gonna put you're gonna put some text in from Thomas on top of that. That's a good question. How to move forward? Would you, how we do this? What, what would you like to do this? I probably would start afresh. Okay. Easier to refresh. I think that would make it easier for a few, yeah. Whether it does it or whether Thomas does it or whatever. We can leave the pull request open and close it if it becomes uh, irrelevant. Right, that's, that's what I'm suggesting is open okay. a separate pull request, uh, review the other one. If we like the other one, uh, then this one could either be abandoned or at least all the stuff stripped out of it that's been obsoleted by the other one, whichever. Okay. This is the pull request. This is the result of the pull of of all of the stuff that we did here. Okay. And as 90, you can start from that one or you can do whatever. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think to start from 90 is also... Fine. No, it's not fine. My text is not down. <laughs> no, I, I, I didn't delete 87, so you can do whatever you want. But um, I'm just saying most of the other changes are there. Yeah, I'm saying the, the wall of green text is stuff that I would be happy to see, uh, Thomas, if you choose to not start from the wall of green text and start from something else. That's what I'm suggesting. I would find it easier to review because I, 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 I still understand what's broken, but I'm hoping you can make it clear in your pull request. So, okay, great. Okay, all right. Cool. Let's move on to number eighty-eight, which is probably even more contentious, right? Or at least it's longer. Right? Oh, I thought I the text was off. shorter. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I commented on stuff. I think we can go through comments. Some I don't know if the sequence of comments is cool, but uh, I think yeah, contentious stuff starts here. Yeah, saying I don't think any of the three things need to be in the architecture document. So they're they're the comments yeah, that I'm putting time. Already one. Yeah, so I, I agree with CC somehow. Flames collection was a big item uh, with uh, with how to create the eats. So, but I assume that is correct if you had just uh, attest, uh, attest awareness and uh, evidence generation, then you can skip the the in between thingy that is CC. Did, did you see actual time? Not, uh, 
To me, the actual time of something matters if one of two things is true. Either the actual time is passed in some form in a message across a wire, okay? Or that's if, that, that's an example, right? Because time EG is an example of one that might be passed inside the evidence, right? You put the timestamp in there. That's an example of- Time, why. for example. So EG, that's very good. Okay. <laughs> uh, in some of the diagrams, is the the messages actually include in some of the examples a particular time time. And so I I think it belongs in the document if uh, the example is actually patent. Uh, one of two cases, right? The first case is if you actually pass the timestamp in an actual message, then I agree it goes in here. Um, the second case that I agree that it goes in there is if you uh, remember it and compare it in some way against something that gets passed in a message. So for example, you compare the value that you get in a message you received against a value that you'd stored from before and compare that against some threshold as an example. Um, that's a way of using it. And then it's then it's important to keep it in here. I don't know of a third oh. case. And so if- oh, yeah. the, the, third case, the third case is recentness. So, so if, if you so we have this boot, we have this simple thingy like boot time integrity and runtime integrity. Boot time is some at some point done. So let's go through things That's, one at a time. So CC is the okay. first one, right? I had claimed that CC is never passed in a message, nor is it used in some comparison against something that comes across a wire. And so that's why I argued that CC is not necessary in this diagram. It's an event that happens, but the timestamp of it is not relevant. That's what I was arguing. That is, that is correct. The timestamp, also most of this timestamp is not always go on the wire. Uh, if you go later down to the timestamp. There, there are some that don't go on the wire, but they're compared against in some way. Yeah, so that's, I'd say like CC is not necessary in this document was the first point. Yeah. Uh, because those things work. So then we can go on to the next one, which was HD, which I'm not sure I completely understand HD. I was trying to figure out why is HD relevant? Does HD appear on the wire or are you comparing it against something that goes on the wire? And as far as I can tell, the answer is no. No, it does go over the wire. So, um, but unfortunately, I didn't, I didn't want to include it. So there's a diagram somewhere. Um, so yes. Because these are examples. So we don't have to include every possible protocol that's in here. Yes. And so I don't think it's actually, I don't think we should try to incorporate every possible protocol that's in here. So that's why, unless it's used in one of these examples, then either it's we have to say it's used in which example? And the example that is coming below for time-based. Basically, it's the, uh, it's the, it's the timestamp thingy that is not the nonce. So we were talking about broadcast. I think it came up. Uh, that is a very good example, I think. So the handle distribution could be a broadcast. So what I did not do is to input put into this diagram the source of the broadcast. Basically, time HD is the reception of the handle. Yes. Uh -huh. So of the request of the request of the handle, if you if you have to pull it, I don't know, whatever you feel fit to do, I don't know. Um, so this right is now the, I claim that the reception of any message, the timestamp. Right now, I, my claim is feel free to disprove. Right, my claim is that the reception time of any particular message is irrelevant. Uh, that is Here's true. time eg have, have, time eg is not, important here if you have not received the hd you cannot do eg that's very important for eg i think sure but it doesn't matter what time you receive the hd at all that matters no, that the time that you start doing EG, eg let me think about this now that it is not true so the uh, tester has a clock that drifts all the time to a master so it is uh, if, if, if there is a maximum time li time uh, span to the receiver of HD, which the tester has to uh, keep in mind when creating evidence, because if it has no new HD after a certain threshold, when the drift is too high, for example, due to sampling beforehand, uh, then HD is not uh, reception received HD is not uh, valid anymore at that point of time. And you have to check for that if the time passes. So there is a time interval measured by the tester here, which I admittedly have not put into the example okay. I have uh, created. Uh, all I can say is I cannot understand the HD text at all right now. So uh, we don't necessarily have to uh, attach the call, but I'm saying I can't accept the text because it doesn't make sense to me. That is okay. We can have a, uh, a design on the text uh, for next week, a uh, no new version. I, I think also HD is not the best term. I don't know where that came from actually, but uh, it was at some, at some table at some point. And I, I worked from that, uh, uh, thinking that it's somehow at a uh, somehow validated source because I think it was on the email list. But uh, I agree that handle distribution is a very abstract way to say, yeah, you need a, a, a let's call it a, um, a separate proof that has to exist on the tester that your uh, clock makes sense to other, some, some other entities like the verifier. And if that's not there, you cannot create valid evidence anymore. 
and uh, that is a given. And this this proof expires due to the drift uh, problem. To, to me, what you're describing so far sounds like a nonce, but I'll reserve judgment until I see some actual text. So, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, certainly not a nonce. Okay. Oh, as, unless you think a timestamp is a nonce because it can never be used again if the time has passed, then it's a nonce. But then everything is a nonce. It, your nonce could be a timestamp because uh, if, if you don't have synchronized clocks and any timestamp that uh, you can't compare against anything else is basically a nonce, yeah? Um, if you're not comparing to... against anything locally, you're just say, treating it as, a, as an opaque value, then, then yeah, a timestamp could be a nonce. Could, you could construe a signed proof Right. Just like a, the sequence uh, number relative to local time consequentialization as a nonce. Like in, that is... in some protocols, you could use a sequence number as a nonce. It just depends on how the protocol uses it, whether it's a valid use as a nonce. Yeah. So, so HD is the distribution of a handle, and it's not coming from the relying party or the verifier, but it is coming external to the attester. Yes, that is true. Okay. It so this diagram would be clearer. Context. It would be clear if there was an arrow somehow that pointed in right at this point from somewhere else because that would distinguish that that point right yeah. it looks arbitrary to me because there's no there's this this part is not annotated in any way but so, there's an external event that's driving where the time of hd is um i i am not sure yet whether any such change would belong in this example or whether it's a different example or whatever. So I might actually find I, it easier. I, I accept that point. If, I accept no, that point, saying, Dave. I, yeah. I would find it easier if it was in a, uh, a slide format to walk us through it. Yeah. As opposed to a pull request, yes. The text has to improve. So the input we, I got today, uh, I can use to uh, elaborate on, maybe even change the name HD. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, maybe we can even make a relationship to nonce to make it clearer uh, how this is used. But the important thing is that the receive reception point and the, there is an expiration time for it. And that is why the attest has to a little bit uh, 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 take a look. Okay, it sounded to me like Eric and Yuri had some specific uh, interest on this particular part of it. Yes, uh, we're doing mm -hmm. stuff like this, and we do need a distribution of some kind of uh, handle or whatever you want to call it. And I think that broadcast, multicast, uh, all these things are are very interesting for the term that's being put in. Yeah, and I think, I think the challenge is, even if you look at broadcast, multicast, is, you know, in both devices, you can't really, since there's no connection, you don't know whether both devices are, you, even if they have reliable time references, you don't know the say, if they're using the same reliable time references, right? One could be using a different NTP source than the other. So um, I still think that you can get, get an adequate security uh, assurance with some relative freshness. Um, I don't think it's totally worthless, but I mean, we just have to, you know, we do, we should accommodate that. Like you said, that's, that's what both absolute and relative time references do. So I can't tell whether we're just talking about um, how the clocks get synchronized. Because the section we're looking at right now is the one that assumes synchronized clocks between all three entities in this example, right? The tester going party no, they're, not, they're, they're not synchronized yet. No, in this section it is, right? If you look at the last the, the line on the top of uh, his screen, N requires synchronized clocks between the tester verifying and party. That's the section we're in, is the one where that statement is true. That is true. Um, maybe if you're talking about an example that does not require synchronized clocks, you're in the wrong section. No, I uh, just highlight uh, at this point of time, uh, only HD makes sure that you can prove that your clock is synchronized to every other body that is uh, trusting this uh, the source of this uh, handle. Uh, okay. That is the only interesting thing that... interesting point here. Okay, so HD has something to do with with proving that you have a synchronized clock. Interesting. Yes, and this proof can be done by the local clock locally, and apparently. So the handle distribution includes that kind of proof. I don't understand how you can prove without the same thing happening on relying parties and verifiers. That is correct. Okay, so all right. At least, at least saying, this, yes, you I'm have going to going have to some to... mechanism of assuring that you have synchronized clocks that's independent of attestation between the attest relying party and the verifier. No, uh, synchronized clocks whatever, is whatever mechanism it's called NTP. What we do here is create evidence specifically created for the 
uh, proof that this clock actually refers to a attestation environment, yada, yada, you know. So we create evidence that is not the evidence for that the attester creates, but only add evidence that can only credit with this outside handle, that this domain here of uh, the three parties uh, have, uh, can, can, can trust the synchronization. That is, that is the only thing we are doing here with the hand distribution. And we could make this diagram very complex to make it correct, or we have to abstract it somehow and maybe revert the definition of HD a little bit to make this uh, work with only the three parties illustrated. Otherwise, we are breaking the pattern here of how to uh, uh, do the diagrams, which is a little bit uh, confusing to the reader, I assume. So I'm noticing it's now the top of the hour. Do you have enough information to know what to do next? I, I, I can try. So I will, I will also call out for Giri maybe uh, before next Tuesday and provide him with an example, and then he can bash it hard bilaterally. And then we can move to a thing that is uh, hopefully somehow better uh, next Thursday. Okay. I'm happy to okay. pay attention. I will give that. Yeah, I'm happy to Thank be part right. of that too, Hank. Okay. okay. And we need to deal with the feedback from Kathleen on email or know that we've done it next week as well. All right. I got to so drop Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye. I know that you responded, Hank, to her. Um, we just got to make sure that all I'm saying is we need some pull request or some evidence uh, of what we, we need some evidence, yes, um, to attest to the fact that we responded to her email. That is correct. Uh, so um, I, I said in, in the next sessions, I was deliberately a little bit vague because I was relatively sure we're not doing this today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So let's, let's, yeah, no, let's, 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 let's grind through this part and uh, we need to put together whatever changes to satisfy her. Um, your more time considerations uh, branch rebased without issue on master. Really? Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm adding to a non contested zone. That's good. Finally. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Sorry for all the hold up again. I know that editing something that is rebased three times is hard. <laughs> sorry again. But I think it was worthwhile, and at least with uh, Thomas now uh, uh, providing this wow input, I was really uh, baffled by how cool the input was. Um, this might actually resolve into something that we can add to the document. That would so be you're nice. you're going to work with Thomas without us on the freshness or freshness to branch. Uh, uh, is Thomas still on the call? Let me check. Yeah, he is still on the call. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, I will yeah, cool. organize with Hank, no problems. Yeah. Okay. So then for next week, we're going to have some text. Yeah. We'll do first pitch. Yeah, yeah, that will be super cool. Thank you. So, so Thomas, just to make sure, you are doing first uh, pitch, right? Yep. Okay, excellent. Then I'm, I'm super okay. <laughs> Cheers. Okay, great. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.